All right, Frank Elianya, who is of the Business Day, is my guest this morning as we take a look at what World Bank is saying about our currency. The World Bank says that the Naira has weakened by 40% against the U.S. dollar since the mid-June devaluation. Um, although uh, these measures are intended to improve the fiscal and external accounts of the nation, their inflationary effects in the near term can erode the purchasing power of households and weigh on economic activity. In June 2023, the Central Bank of Nigeria directed deposit money banks to remove the rate cap on the Naira at the official investors and experts window of the foreign exchange market and allowed the free float of the Naira against the dollar and other global currencies. Well, since then, the Naira has fallen from 473 Naira to around 800 Naira officially. As we are celebrating our independence, 63rd independence anniversary, we want to take a look at how the Naira has fallen from grace to grass. A currency which was originally the British pound and was changed in 1973 to the Naira was stronger than the U.S. dollar, but was at par with the British pound. But today, look at where it is against this same U.S. dollar, 800 Naira and uh, 1,000 plus. We have been joined, as I said, uh, by two, we've been joined um, by Frank Olianya, who is of the Business Day. Hello, Frank. Good morning, and always a pleasure to be on the show. It was a pleasure to have you, Frank. Now, how serious are we in changing this situation with our main uh, mono economy uh, based on oil export, solely based on oil export? How serious are we as we talk about improving our economy? i very, very frank with you. Um, Actually, uh, um, given and gain on this new administration, located that from the day one that starts um, together, um, for support, maybe, and then also um, move leakages in the, the I'm showing a, a little bit more transparency, but um, I, I don't think we. Uh, I think we are like uh, from May to October now. I think we're like uh, almost five months into. Uh, I I can't seem to um, pinpoint exactly what has been done, you know, in terms of moving the economy um, forward. Yeah, um, we saw a lot of. From the government about what it intends to do we saw a lot of uh, we have removed the subsidy um, we have removed uh, we are floating the naira you know but um, there's been little in terms of of action um, in terms of maybe lifting the infrastructure deficit and in uh, um, um, increasing productivity in the manufacturing sector um, also, um, encouraging other sectors of the economy to pull their weight, since we are already having a, um, a shortfall from from our oil oil revenue, and we we also seem not to be moving too quickly in terms of reforms in the oil sector. Um, production levels haven't moved significantly. Um, I can also seem to um, see um, the, the kind of urgency. As required, you know, to ensure that uh, the oil majors and all, all other operators in that sector, uh, um, production activity, is, we haven't really done so much, you know. So there's a lot of talk, but little movement is like uh, is like a rocking chair, uh, um, a lot of motion, but um, no force applied, you know. So um, I don't think I can give any form of pass mark to the present administration in terms of uh, um, we have also seen the quality of team that they brought on, on board and uh, absolutely disappointed 
in the um, in the selection and uh, and the kind of people that they brought in. And of course, it's, it's already beginning to tell because um, as of now, we haven't seen any any vision from, for instance, uh, the Minister of Education doesn't have anything that he um, We are not seeing anything maybe from uh, um, who, who is the Minister of uh, Interior, uh, who is the Minister of uh, uh, um, Commerce, you know. So a lot of them have gone back. It's like we replaced um, an old government with this, with, uh, with the same government. I don't know what exactly happened in, in May 2029, but it's like a deja vu. We, we haven't moved any any step, like I can say, there's uh, something significant happening in, in the economy currently. And it impacts the confidence of, of investors when they are, because they have seen all of this. They are seeing things that are happening and they are thinking to themselves, where exactly is the direction of the new government? What does it want to do? I can't. I think I, um, I can't beat my chest to say this is exactly where it, it, it plans to go. It has said something about mining. It has said something about uh, um, the agri sector and all that. But actual action. It even made a promise to the manufacturing sector that hasn't been fulfilled. Seventy uh, um, uh, um, seventy billion naira that it plans to uh, give to uh, manufacturers. You know, so that money hasn't been released. You know, the other day it made a promise of a uh, um, three billion dollars uh, loan uh, from our Belgian bank and, and NNPC, and that money was never released. So it's it's almost like there's an audio um, kind of government happening. You know, so a lot of promise, but all of them don't amount to anything at the end of the day. Headlines we saw today on the Punch newspaper is that man is saying that they're experiencing the worst period ever in history. It's, <laughs> it's not it's not uh, it's not surprising, you know. Um, it's it's absolutely uh, um, um, ridiculous what what we're seeing, you know. Um, also. Some of us are also not surprised, you know, because of uh, the nature in which this administration started, the nature in which it was selected to uh, um, to power, you know. So um, a lot of things already started very wrong with it, and they've already got uh, and they've gotten worse uh, since since they started, you know. And uh, um, as it is, the renewed hope that they promised uh, somehow has a, uh, has not turned into any hope at all, you know. So. Um, manufacturers, their problems are very clear. It is not something that you need to go to school to learn. It is something that has already been written several times. This is what is facing manufacturers. They require, they require incentives. They, they need electricity. They need, they need infrastructure. They need finance, all right, for them to move. Then you come in, rather than face those um, challenges and, and and address them, what you end up doing is to increase the burden that they have been facing by floating the Naira and, in, uh, and making it uh, and making it almost impossible for them to even have access to these cash dollars that they, uh, that they have been facing uh, uh, in time past. Um, any same government, the, the first priority would have been how do I make it easier for these guys to access dollars so that they can bring in their um, goods from overseas, you know, because we don't, we don't manufacture the things that they require here. Their own materials. Yeah, and then the so, farmers themselves are also having problems going back to their farms. Uh, so that also is a major challenge of its own. Although the Senate today, in the news as we saw, the Senate yesterday summoned the security chiefs to come and, and discuss with them so that they can find a way forward. However, it's been days since, it's just been days, uh, since the new central bank governor has been confirmed along with his four deputies. What would you say to those who are saying that, look, President Bu uh, Tinubu just came into power. He's not the one that's caused all the problems that Nigeria is going through. Why are Nigerians being impatient with him? It's the same excuse that the same people gave when Buhari came in and spent six months and didn't select um, cabinet. They said 
uh, we were being impatient with him. We should give him a lot more time. And then they stayed there for eight years, and it, perhaps it wasn't enough time for them to do something. I don't know what it means when you come into an empty or into a dirty house, and six months after that, or three months after that house remains dirty. It, it, it means that you're not ready to work. So for the cleaning, what exactly are you doing to change the, the environment that you came in? We uh, um, Remember on this show, we have talked about how the government continues to run a very um, expensive government. Okay, so why do we start from there, from day one? It only tells you that it, it, there was no plan to actually cut down on the cost of governance. All right. And then from there, we graduated into 45 ministers. And right now, there are 71 more names mm. that will make it for the six ministers. But six ministers that have done absolutely nothing from the day they were appointed. This is like five months. All of them took office. The Minister of, uh, of uh, Communications and Digital Economy, for instance, have not made the telecom industry in the past five w w w w weeks. He has been running around with uh, take, uh, take, uh, um, take people and also releasing some vision about what he intends to do and all that. But then you're not meeting the people who provide infrastructure for the digital um, economy that you want to build. The same, I just spoke about the Minister of uh, Education who has not even said anything about the direction that he wants to take the education system to. So several of them sitting on their salaries for the past how many um, weeks and doing nothing absolutely. So how much longer, after, how, and Nigeria is just at the point where you're talking about uh, patients. That's, we, have, we have run out of patients. The economy has run out of patients. The economy is, is on its knee. The Naira is on his knee. So you, you don't talk about patience when your house is When there is fire on the okay. mountain. Yes, I get that. Okay. Uh, have you heard about the currency redenomination being speculated in some quarters? It was all over the place, say, two, three weeks ago. Uh, of course, the central bank has denied that, saying that they have nothing like that on their table. But what do you make of the idea of currency redenomination? Is this something you think Nigeria should be considering at this point, considering the free fall of the Naira right now? I think they have gotten to a point where they are, as the discretion has, has uh, uh, um, taken over. So everything becomes, um, let's try and see if this won't work, if this one doesn't work, and all that. And what it, what it only tells me is that these guys didn't have any plan at all when they, when they came in. They didn't have, there was no blueprint as this is what our governance is going to um, to, to be defined by, you know, that this is what we're going to be known for. This is, this is the direction that we're going, which is why we didn't see any direction. Even with all the speeches that were given by the president, there was no single itemized direction that this economy is supposed to take. We can't see this is where we want to go and all that. So the CBN has resorted to what Emifele was doing, which is, um, if this doesn't work, let's try this one. If that one doesn't work, so it's like gambling, you know. So if, if, if it works, they say, oh, yeah, it works. You know, if it doesn't work, if people come after it, they say, no, um, this is not what we want to do. Uh, you, can, you know, so it, it has gotten to that point now where discretion has taken place and um, everything becomes, uh, um, let's try it. In every rumor, there is, a, there is truth in this. The thing is that, if, if you can recall, this is, this is how the, the Naira redomination, uh, redomination started. Um, when they started talking about that, people were saying, oh, the CBN said that they want to do this. And the CBN came back and said, no, we don't want to redesign the Naira. This is what we want to do. I don't know. Redesign the Naira. So this is, this, this is the desperation that has gotten into the government because there was no proper planning from day one of this is what if there was, I want to see it. But it's not showing. Hmm. All right, well, Frank, thank you so much for your time. Always interesting having you on The Breakfast. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Frank Ilianya, he's the technology and media editor um, at the Business Day newspaper. That was our first hot topic. From there, we'll move on to the second hot topic, which we'll bring to you in a moment. After now, I want to take a look at teachers. Have they been celebrated enough? Should their rewards still be in heaven?
Well, we have a teacher who will be joining us in the house for that. Stay with us. <laughs>